Welcome to lesson 14 in the FL Studio tutorial series. This lesson continues our set of lessons concerning adding and managing content in FL Studio. In this lesson, we're going to focus on how to use the powerful FPC plugin that comes preloaded in FL Studio. FPC is a high end sampler that, although mostly used for drums, can be used to control any audio loops or samples in an MPC style fashion. The FPC layout features two banks of 16 pads mapped over a 4x4 grid for a total of 32 programmable pads. These pads can be loaded with different samples and can support multiple velocities. This layout is consistent with most MPC style drum pad controllers making the pads easy to trigger externally. If you choose to trigger and program the pads within the software you'll have to use the piano roll. Choose a preloaded kit to begin working with by going to the drop down menu here and choose presets or right click these arrows and choose a preset kit. Let's first explore how to program the drums using the piano roll. With FPC added to the step sequencer open its piano roll and instead of keys you should see a list of notes and any drums available in the current kit. You'll program the drums by adding blocks in the rows beside the name of the drums you want included in your pattern. While you're only programming the instrument of one channel, you will end up with multiple samples being triggered. In using FPC with external MIDI controllers, or even your typing keyboard, we may want to designate what pads our external devices keys or pads trigger. To do this, if you aren't familiar with how to assign notes to your controller, we can simply go to the MIDI notes section and left click, then choose Map Notes for Entire Bank. FPC will wait for input from 16 keys or pads on a controller that it will assign to the pads in the bank. If you do this with the typing keyboard, realize some keys won't send messages. Another option for assigning pads to your controller is to first hit a pad in FPC, then go under the same MIDI note menu, choose Learn, then hit a key or pad on your MIDI controller or typing keyboard. If we want, we can create our own custom kits. The easiest way to do this is to go to the empty preset which loads an empty set of pads. Then using our browser we can add a sample of our own by dragging and dropping it onto a pad. Once added the sample will be triggered at a full velocity. If we want multiple velocities we can go to the create button and then hit it to add a new layer for however many layer velocity ranges we want to use. For now let's hit create three times to have four layers. Then Hit the spread even button to evenly distribute the velocity ranges across the four layers. Make sure the scale volume switch is lit also in this process. All that is left to do now is to add an instance of the sample again by dragging to each layer. Now our pad is velocity sensitive and will play the sample at various volumes depending on how much pressure is applied to the MIDI controller's key or pad. You will also see that there are numerous other options for adjusting the sample on each pad including some volume envelope and pan envelope controls plus a reverse feature. If you use some lengthier samples, breaks, or loops you may want to also make use of the mute group like features in the cut section. This allows certain samples to be cut off when re-triggered or when a sample from the same group is triggered. We visited this previously in lesson 13 with the cut itself feature of the channel settings menu. But that option isn't available here. Instead we must actually change the numbers in the cut boxes manually. Here I will add two loops to some pads in FPC. Once added, by putting them into different groups I can make it so that they won't overlap on themselves but since they're in different groups they can play at the same time.
Using FPC, you can also choose from preloaded MIDI loops or scores of your own in FPC that will be sent to the step sequencer. From here, you can go into the piano roll to make any adjustments. In saving your project with the FPC kit included, if you used any samples of your own, you may want to export as a zip loop package like we mentioned doing in the previous lesson. To save the project, plus any samples used, therefore ensuring it will open for any FL user as it was intended, as others may not have access to your personal sample collection that our project is dependent upon. Now you should have a thorough understanding of how to use FPC to add and control samples in your patterns and projects. Thus ends our lesson on FPC.